in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Quite a skirmish at the airport with this document. And uh, you won, of course, your skirmish over the document. Uh-huh. This is a victory celebration for all of us, since the decision I made will affect the future of my family. In fact, I was just about to propose a toast. You were about to propose a toast. Unless, since this is something that affects the entire family, you'd like your other grandson to join us? I'd be glad to extend your invitation to Rodney and his guest. Good evening, Rodney. Oh, hello, grandfather. Uh, why don't you join us? Oh, well, I thank you, but I... Oh, nonsense. I'm sure this charming young lady doesn't want you to deny me the pleasure of her company. Well, it's, it's uh, up to Rod. <laughs> no, no, my dear. It's up to us. Hmm. Okay. Stephen, could you find a few chairs for our guests? Uh, no, no, uh, right here, beside me. Chandler. I 
Obviously, you have suspicions. You wouldn't have questioned him. John, there's nothing mysterious about it. It's that Rachel went out to the farmhouse from Norman and Rita's apartment. And I just wanted to know whether Chandler was out there with her, that's all. And I told you, you know. Yes, but what do you think? I mean, what do you think really happened when she got there? Oh, I don't know what happened. I tried to find out, but I couldn't get anywhere. Elliot. Now, look, Rachel is safe. She's back here with us. Why don't we just let it that way? Well, you're keeping something from me. I don't know anything more about this than you do. That's not what I mean. You're, you're trying to protect me, so you're not sharing your feelings or your fears. But it's not protecting me, Elliot. In a way, it's deceiving me. All right. I'm sorry, I am afraid. I'm very much afraid. When I went out there to that farmhouse, there were signs of a struggle out there. Window was broken, furniture had been knocked over. And he'd been out there all right. He didn't deny that. Do you think they were there at the same time? Yes, I do. He doesn't act like an uncle to her. I'm sure of that now. He has an... an obsession for that girl. I don't know how he got her out there. But once she found out what he was up to, she must have put up a terrific fight. She's so young and helpless and innocent. Man Chandler, do you think the same thing happened to Alice? Oh, darling, I... You do? You think that man had something to do with Alice? Something awful? Oh, no, there's no proof of that, you know. But that's what you think, isn't it? Yes. That's what I'm afraid of. <gasps> I don't know, darling. But you see, I don't really know. He's lost. I've been up and down both sides of the street and across on the other side, and he's just disappeared. You'll turn up, Rachel, when he gets on me. No, you don't understand. He's gone. I didn't even get the chance to give him a name, and now he's lost. Now, don't be upset. We'll find him. We'll take the car, and we'll scour the whole neighborhood. Come on, I'll get my coat. Oh, it's so cold outside. I hate to think of him being out there all alone. Well, I don't know about that. He's probably having a wee of a time while here we are worried to death about him. Come on, let's go out and find him. Darling, will you be all right? As you know, the mill has an ironclad rule against letting outsiders consult their personnel records. And you can't, for the life of you, see how you can break that rule. I decided to make an exception. Oh. On what grounds? Well, I do owe you something. I allowed you to sit in a prison cell. Forget it. That's in the past. That makes me feel my indebtedness even more strongly. What's the matter? Well, I thought it might be because you'd begun to share my feelings about Chandler. It's a girl's word against his. Then you've questioned Chandler about it. He seems generally concerned about her welfare. Here, I uh, know I don't have to ask you to treat this as highly confidential. If you should uncover anything out of the ordinary about Chandler's past, that would put an entirely different color on the matter. You still feel positively about the man, don't you? If he is hiding something shady, I promise you I'll be the first to get rid of him. I may not share your concern, but I can certainly appreciate it. After all, your daughter and Rodney were... Whatever I can do to help, anything that might be a clue to Allison's disappearance, I'll do all I can. You have my word. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Um, 
Let me ask you something, Elliot. If you took a job at the company and you had to fill out a routine personnel report, and there was something in your past, would you give yourself away? Yeah, I've been thinking about that myself. But you see, all I need is a name, a reference, any shred of something that will lead me to something else and then to something else, you see. Well, I can't conceal my curiosity. Go ahead, take a look. See if anything rings a bell. Well, my grandfather was in rare form tonight, wasn't he? Yeah. As soon as he and Mr. and Mrs. Cord got up from the table, he turned around and smiled at me. He was really getting his kicks. And for an encore, he should have pulled the tablecloth out from under the dishes. Presto. Yeah, he's tough. No, Santa, he's just proving a point, crudely. He's saying, see, Rodney, you see how Stephen has grown into a man. You see how, how well he brushes his hair and how nicely he eats his meal. And you, you're... Turning into a slob. I think you mean that. I do mean it. You're turning into a slob. Well, you're dating me, aren't you? Cut it out. Andy. This is my father in his room. I didn't see Mr. Harrington go out. Do you want to use the house phone? I'm going to go outside. I think I need some fresh air. back to talk to you. I left old man painting in the uh, cords over at the judge's house. Took a chance that they were going to stay there for a while. You know? I took a gamble on my job, honey, just to uh, come back and have the pleasure of touching you. Let me go. What are you doing here? I can go where I want to now. You don't belong here, sweetheart, especially with Rodney. What I do and who I do it with is none of your business. Well, I'm making it my business. Somebody's got to set you straight, Sandy. That guy doesn't care anything about you. All he's interested in is kicks. I'm not through yet. Now, he probably thought it was a big joke taking you into the inn. Golden boy and the hash slinger from the cider barrel. Wise up, Sandy. All he wants you for is a couple of laughs. Are you through yet? I've got your best interest at heart. I don't want to see you get hurt, Sandy. Well, then leave me alone. I've got to get back to old man Payton. I was kind of hoping you'd throw that first punch, Rodney. Because now I owe you something, boy. And when I owe, golden boy, I pay.